another week another trading cycles video we're now in week one of the year 2024 that's because it's the first of january of 2024 happy new year everyone and i hope you had a merry christmas or whatever holiday you might celebrate or might not hope you had a wonderful holiday time and that you have a wonderful new year um welcome back to our youtube channel as always we tend to do these videos weekly where we kind of go over uh, what's happened in the last week uh, in terms of uh, the trading markets and try to predict what might happen in the future uh, before we continue on here keep in mind uh, that we do not provide financial advice here all the content that we share is intended for educational purposes only and always trade the price and not the prediction as previously mentioned my name is eric and i'm accompanied here by uh Urmus. as always how are you doing Urmus? and uh happy new year yes happy new year to you and uh, to all our listeners and watch whoever is, is following us here mm -hmm. um anyway um yeah i'm doing all right <laughs> it's uh, it's been busy time as always um, end of year not on the markets but yeah there are some other things always to look after in the end of the year and um, obviously do some reviews and um, and uh, look ahead what the new year might bring so mm -hmm. that obviously draws our attention and um, yeah in the beginning of the year I always tend to um, try to set the tone uh, for the new year or, or try to understand which cycles are working and which are not and uh, sometimes we are successful sometimes we need to adjust during the year so <laughs> obviously um, as, as always uh, we can't uh, predict 100 percent but we do know some tendencies that might happen yeah and we work with probabilities on financial markets so if you tend to be 100 percent certain of anything then you are foolish and you are probably <laughs> wrong <laughs> mm -hmm. all right um, but yeah, uh, so basically um, this video is going to be a bit different, yeah, because uh, I'm going to look uh, a bit back what happened and obviously uh, go through a couple of um, important cycles as well that we need to keep in mind. Um, and then we will have a short review of the week as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, begin with what happened uh, last year so as we did uh, obviously notice who has been on the markets that um, year ended fairly positively it was uh, one of the strongest years uh, and um, obviously there are some reasons which i'm going to cover as well um, we did see some declines during the year so march uh, did indicate that banking uh, crisis in us uh, but that um, as, as Fed stepped in there quite strongly, that was uh, forgotten quite soon. Then in the other half of the year, we did saw, saw some decline on, on US stock markets, which ended uh, by the end of October. And that was also um, quite predictable there. And we also saw a very, high, very sharp um, rally uh, in the end of October, which began there. Yeah? And it was the seasonal rally that we did anticipate. Obviously, that did play out fairly, fairly well. All right. Mm -hmm. um, now, we also cover um, Estonian markets here, which are not doing so well so obviously that's more for our estonian channel but um, yeah as um, as it is in the tech here <laughs> i'm just gonna cover sh shortly we do expect that the market might turn um, next or this year now yeah 2024 so um, uh, we might be seeing a bottom there quite soon all right mm -hmm. um, now coal market has been very strong during the year so um, as well we did see a turning point there in october and since then it's been rolling quite quite uh, heavily and we do expect there um, uh, that kind of tendency to continue if dollar is gonna um, uh, continue weakening yeah during the year all right um same goes for bitcoin so that was um a very good um, good rally which we saw um, in the last uh, three months of the year and uh, we did uh, obviously 
talk about it quite a lot as well uh, in our videos and, and we did anticipate um, that rally to continue we will cover um, a bit of this year's current year's uh, tendencies as well in this video all right mm -hmm. so overall very good strong year yeah uh, for the markets that we are covering mm, now except yeah Tallinn <laughs> all right but that's out of the scope anyway from uh, for this video and now mm, what we might see or what we can expect um, in uh, 2024 there are some cycles that we need to bear in mind. One of them, what is affecting our daily lives is a sunspot um, cycle or solar cycle, as we, as we call it. Yeah. Now, it tends to bring uh, out some sort of extremes on the market. So either in its top or peak or its lows, the market tends to have um, some sort of panics or or extremes at least, yeah, or rallies. And now uh, we are um, basically um, in that, uh, well, we, we should uh, see the top in, in that cycle quite soon, yeah, either this year or, or early next year, okay. Uh, if we look a bit closer, yeah, that's, that's what we see here by the prediction, all right. So the top might be might be there quite soon. So if it is true, then we might see markets topping out either in 2024 or early 25. All right. So that's what sun sunspot uh, cycle is telling us. And um, at the moment, as we see from here, uh, it has been fairly accurate again. So sunspots have been rising yeah, since uh, well, that prediction was done, I believe in 2017 or 16 somewhere there yeah so that data was was not available then but obviously it is quite predictable uh, cycle so yeah it's been going alongside with the with the prediction as well all right um now another cycle that's uh, fairly important to um uh, to real estate and also financial markets and also economical um, uh, tendencies is um lunar node cycle or um, as MacWriter uh, has stated it is a it's a business cycle yeah 18.6 years and um, obviously that's fairly long time uh, for markets but there are some um, some tendencies again now we are currently on the axis of Aries and Libra with uh, with the nodes and nodes are moving counterclockwise so we are heading to this um, this axis here so to the bottom yeah mm. now that is not we are not there yet but we're going to be there in the next coming years yeah uh, so we do expect that obviously the um, real estate um, market will see some sort of declines mm, uh, that cycle is is a bit um, different to the to the stock market cycles but yeah that's something we will expect quite soon and um, also stock markets will see some sort of declines when the econom economy is going to decline or shrink yeah? so um, these tendencies are in place as well by this cycle now there is um, a fairly old um, old prediction or, or not, not prediction it's, it's like um, a cyclical analysis that uh, Samuel Banner did uh, back in 1875, about 150 years ago, and um, um, he was a farmer who who did lose quite a lot of money there uh, when when the, um, uh, when the market uh, hits it, it hit hits bottom um, in 18 uh, what is it 60s yeah I believe it was a big crash there. So uh, he was wondering uh, how those cycles work and, and are there any patterns that uh, he could use uh, for its, uh, its future. And he did come up with, uh, with that sort of prediction then. And um, as we've been following it um, during the years, we have seen that it works still fairly good, even, even these days. Yeah? So we did see a top there in 2007, then we had a financial crisis. Now, we did hit that uh, top in 2019 then the covid hit yeah and now we are back uh, in in business so it's heading up again yeah 
So basically what Penner did, um, he did use um, those sunspot cycles, obviously back then he probably didn't know what it is, but it is the 11 year cycle. And also um, the node cycle is included in his research. All right, so he did combine those cycles and uh, did come up with fairly accurate prediction um, for this, uh, these two centuries basically, yeah? or one and a half centuries here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. So that's something to bear in mind. So at the moment, we are still um, in, in rising markets. So we do expect that um, 2024 should be still fairly positive in that sense. Might not be as positive as 23 was, but, um, but might be okay. Now, we do have a confirmation um, by the um, uh, presidential cycle as well, in that sense. So basically, in US, we will have um, election um, this year in November, and that's going to be the fourth and last year of the presidential cycle. And uh, now, as we do see, um, first year of the presidential cycles tends to be uh, positive, but not overly positive. Then second year is the worst. And that was um, in our current cycle, it was 2022, when we did see market decline. And from uh, September, October, the market started recovering. And we have seen it now um, till this day, yeah, basically. So the third year is, um, is the best out of those four. Now the fourth year is also positive, um, not as good as third year, but still fairly positive, yeah? All right. Mm -hmm. So at the moment we are roughly in this point here and uh, we do expect that the market might still rise in the, in the new year, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we also have a um, similar cycle in length as the presidential one is, obviously the presidential one is uh, 48 months long um, what tends to work a bit more accurately is 42 month cycle and that cycle uh, we did um, rule out last year because it, it it was a bit sloppy there by the end of the year in 2022 so I didn't uh, count it in unfortunately but during the year we did see that uh, obviously the price did follow that cycle very closely uh, as we see from here so that was um, quite accurate still and um, this is obviously the uh, cycle continuing to this year and we see that its tendency is still to the upside okay mm -hmm. and there is also a 56 year cycle uh, which is a bit even longer so um, this is now price movement um, of S&P uh, 556 years ago and um, that is following also that uh, 42 month cycle very, very closely uh, for the year ahead. Okay, so this is what we are focusing at the moment. Um, if it doesn't play out like that, obviously we are keeping an eye on alternative uh, cycles as well as always, but at the moment this is our main focus for the year ahead. Okay, mm -hmm. now for the Bitcoin, um, the key word is halving, yeah. <laughs> so, Basically, um, it has occurred now four times for Bitcoin, and um, every time it has happened, prices have gone up fairly sharply. Now, is it going to happen this time uh, as well? Well, possibly, but um, yeah, we're keeping an eye on it. So the next halving will take place on 21st of April, uh, 24 a.m. So that's something to also follow quite closely, and obviously we're going to keep an eye on it as well. Okay. Now, um, from gold market perspective, obviously the gold tends to do better when the dollar is weakening. Yeah, so as we saw back in 2008 until 2011, the, obviously dollar was on decline, and um, gold saw a very very sharp uh, increase in price. Now we are heading sort of to that direction at the moment. So dollar is uh, is now weakening a bit, and obviously gold has seen new tops again. Yeah, so we might expect that tendency to continue during 2024. Okay. Um, yeah. Alrighty. So that's um, 
basically in regards to long-term cycles and, and what's what we might expect from the year ahead. Mm -hmm. um, now, last week was fairly, fairly slow one, yeah, as, as it tends to be. So not much action was going on. So the price action was fairly positive for three days and then Friday was quite negative. Um, as we do know, uh, market has been quite heavily overbought at the moment because those 50-day and 200-day moving averages have been um, in this red zone already for a um, couple of weeks. Yeah, so uh, at some point it tends to obviously correct again. So it's not the best time to to enter the market at this stage. Yeah, but um, you know, obviously that's why we're keeping an eye on these things. Um, now, technically as well, yes, we do see that um, uh, resistance level here uh, from the top of 2022 beginning there, yeah. So, um, that's where the price has uh, has been now stuck for two weeks, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. If it breaks through, then it might be green light ahead to the upside, but at the moment yes it is a bit hesitant here yeah so we might see um, a correction before that happens okay or a fake out and then it corrects a bit all right mm -hmm. so um, this is the scenario but uh, yeah last week as i said it was very very slow week so um, uh, not much movement the best uh, performer uh, sector wise was healthcare and the worst one was consumer cyclical and monthly performance real estate was the best and the energy was the weakest okay now fear and greed index is also in extreme greed now uh, for the second week in a row so again one sign that market might be Topping for um, for a bit at least, yeah. All right. Uh, seasonally, January tends to be rather positive. Maybe second half is negative a bit, yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, so statistical model also shows that first half is rather positive. And for the past 12 years, um, there has been a strong tendency to the upside um, until. What is now 11th, yeah, all right, and then it might um, might not be that strong anymore, yeah. So that's um, 10 out of 12 uh, has been positive, and the beginning, oh, not not sorry, <laughs> the end of the month is also fairly positive, although there are some red days, yeah. So that's something to um, watch closely as well, yeah. And they might affect the outcome as well. Okay. Astrologically, what we do see in the week ahead, um, tomorrow the Mercury turns direct, so that might show some volatility on the market. And on um, Thursday, the Mars enters Capricorn, yeah, so that might bring some reality to, to the market participants. Yeah? So as we are talking about um, astrological aspects, then it is all related to the psychological um, behavior of market market participants yeah all right um now if we look at the separate aspects here um we do expect tuesday tomorrow to be fairly negative in that sense um, from wednesday on it might be turning to the positive side uh, thursday as well and friday uh also although in the morning we might see some volatility again so uh, do bear in mind that um, uh, job market numbers are coming out on friday morning all right so that's why we might see some volatility there all right but overall outlook is is still positive all right now if you look at the big picture we do have some um fire signs here astrologically as well in the beginning of um, month um, until mid-month or, or second half and that is also fairly positive for markets in most cases when we do see some earth signs coming in um, in the beginning of february then the markets might see some correction okay um so that's that and um our black box model is also showing that it might be still fairly positive month, yeah, okay. 
Uh, what to expect from the next week? There are some uh, economical data coming out, as I said, and also there will be Fed uh, FOMC minutes. So um, that's where we might see some some clues or hear some clues about their uh, their plans for the year ahead. So um, that's something to to watch closely as well. Yeah. So there might be some clues, which uh, we need to take into account we do expect obviously from their previous um, statements that um, they are looking to start um, decreasing now then the interest rate yeah. mm -hmm. um, so that should be the tendency but um, bigger picture obviously there are some positive signs as as we have now noticed that um, inflation is easing um, and it's fairly close to the target uh, already. Uh, there will be some technological advancements during the year, and we do expect um, AI to to move um, further and even in, in, in faster pace than, it, than it's been so far. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, and there are some other technological advancements as well. So that's... Um, uh, for example, robotics and so on. Yeah, so that's uh, a tendency this year. Um, also, the labor market has been quite resilient as well. So if that continues that way, obviously that's a good sign as well for the year ahead. Mm. Global economical recovery. Well, in some regions, yes, that is a positive sign. Others are not still doing so well. And also uh, corporate earnings um, are expected to grow even further if the interests are going to decline yeah mm -hmm. so that's going to improve the outlook for uh, for future um, earnings as well now on the negative side obviously the monetary uh, policy tightening is is not helping and that tends to be the uh, the thing still for the year ahead as well um unless if dollar is weakening uh, very heavily then it's going to um, set some sort of um, inflationary pressure again to US market and um, that's uh, obviously something Fed needs to deal with it again <laughs> all right mm -hmm. so so yeah uh, but we do expect the dollar to to um, weaken a bit this year all right mm, obviously geopolitical tensions are not helping so there are quite a lot um, things going on still and the risks are up uh, debt levels of uh, countries is not helping either. It's, it's quite a uh, big pressure there. And um, recession risks as well are in the, in the air still. All right. Mm -hmm. So these are the risks, obviously, for the year ahead. All right. But overall, yes, uh, cyclical analysis is um, um, indicating we might see a fairly good growth year still for the uh, for the stock market all right so i think um, that's about it for this, this week and uh, beginning of the of the year um, overview and um, we shall see then um, next week um, just one thing to bear in mind there is one turning point coming up for us uh, stock markets and that's tomorrow okay mm -hmm. so uh, not uh, much else going on so as i said yeah tomorrow might be quite volatile um, as well on, on stock markets so keep an eye on that one and um, have a have a good year and um, yeah we'll see you next week all right all right perfect thank you very much Humus, as always and thank you for watching and listening once again happy new year and uh, if you haven't already like the video get subscribed and uh, if you have any questions leave those in the comment section down below and we shall see you next week in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Thank you and have a good week.